All right, so just like in VSAPR, right, our goal here is to have a theory based on quantum mechanics, i.e. molecular orbital theory, in which one of the things we want to be able to do is predict structure. Um, and we're going to want to know, you know what structure is favored for transition metal complexes across various geometries and various coordination layers. One approach would be to derive the MO diagrams for all these different trial structures and then try to come up with trends and compare their energies. This is possible, um, but it'd be quite time consuming. Instead, what we're gonna do is use an approach called ligand field theory. And particularly, we're gonna use what's called the angular overlap method, um, which is just a, a type of ligand field theory, okay? Ligand field theory all has to do with the MO diagram, right? That we talked about in the last video. And now we hopefully understand, right, the factors, pi donating, pi accepting, sigma donating, um, things, factors, parameters that can give rise to uh, different delta O values. If we're talking about octahedral complexes, and of course, if we're talking about complexes with other geometries, um, we could, in a similar way, predict how the energies would change as we change the parameters of the liquids, right? And so just a quick review of that was that if it is that if we had a pi donor ligand, that's going to cause a stronger pi bonding interaction down here, pushing this down, but correspondingly causing this pi antibonding to go up, giving you a smaller delta O if we're talking about octahedral complexes. The converse was true for pi accepting ligands, where you're going to have a um, weaker situation here, and therefore this is going to be moved down giving you a larger delta. Now for sigma donating ligands, uh, sigma donating ligands will have a, a stronger sigma donating, donating ligand will have a stronger sigma bonding interaction pushing this energy, these or orbital energies down, and thus also pushing all of these up in energy, the most important of which is this EG. And if that gets pushed up, well, delta O will also increase. You can't have um, sigma accepting lig ligands, those don't exist. Why don't they exist? Uh, because uh, you, 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 a sigma bond can only have uh, basically two electrons. It's only worth two electrons in. It's kind of the poor type of bonding. And so if you don't have a sigma bond in there, in order to be accepting, you have to have an empty orbital, right? If you don't have a sigma bond in there in the first place, well, then the molecule kind of doesn't exist in the first place. It's not going to be a stable molecule. OK, so there's no such thing as a sigma accepting. Um, so we were able then, by running through that logic, to rationalize the spectral complex series, right, where we had pi accepting ligands, something like carbon monoxide, was going to give rise to a big delta O because it's a pi acceptor, and something like a pi donating ligand is going to give rise to a small delta O. Okay. Um, and so this is saying what I just said about angular overlap method. Ligand field theory basically uses numerical factors. I'm saying your fudge factors that consider the sigma donating and pi donating acceptor character of the ligands in order to make calculations about the MO diagram, okay? So in order to figure out you know, what's gonna happen to all these up levels, we have to know something about the strength of the different interactions of the ligands, okay? So we're gonna assign numerical quantities. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at angular overlap method. All right, but before we do that, Here's just a little bit more about the different types of ligands. You can see here are the strong pi donators and uh, strong sigma donators. This is a, a little bit of a different series. There's a lot of these different series published um, in different texts and online. But you can see iodide, again, is you know, a really pi strong pi donator. It's also a strong sigma donator. So it has a very low delta O, very low splitting of the d orbitals for octahedral complexes. Uh, weaker pi donators, or maybe no, just a little bit of pi donation, um, but uh, a fair amount of sigma donation. You have to have sigma donation or else you don't have one. I've shown here things like water. Uh, ammonia is kind of dead smack in the middle. And you know when we're talking about high spin and low spin complexes, ammonia is a good one to know. Generally, if you're um, talking about first row transition metals, we're talking about high spin, low spin. Uh, first row can be are oftentimes high spin if they are with a ligand that's below ammonia on the, on the spectral chemical series. If you're above ammonia, uh, you're, you're probably going to be, in most cases, you're going to be low spin. Okay, But you know, there's exceptions to this, just a general rule of thumb. 
Ammonia is sort of a borderline case. Ammonia has just signal donation. And then you have these pi accepting, uh, strongly pi accepting ligands that have empty pi, p orbitals that are of the right, or molecular orbitals actually, that are of the right uh, energy to accept electron density from the metals and thus have a very high magnitude delta L. So this is where this angular overlap method stuff comes into play, is we're really gonna be simplifying the MO diagram. And now we know, right, that we're talking about this going up and this one going down when we're talking about a strong sigma donor, stronger sigma donor, bigger effects there. So when we're talking about uh, angular overlap method, that's all we have to con consider when we're considering sigma donating links. This dz squared, that was one of the EGs, for example, I'm just using this as an example. Okay, if you have a really strong donating ligand, we know that this is gonna go up in energy and I'm calling it by magnitude now, E sigma. This is this new angular overlap method nomenclature. And um, if you have a weaker, uh, 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 sorry, so this is gonna go up by E sigma and correspondingly, this orbital, right, which is a ligand orbital, okay, it's, it's this one, this EG, okay, that one is gonna go down. It's gonna go down by some uh, value Whatever it's going to be, we know it's going to be less than E sigma, right? Because uh, bonding, anti-bonding orbitals always go up higher than the corresponding anti, anti-bonding orbitals always go up higher than the corresponding bonding orbitals. So this is the anti-bonding orbital up here that is relevant to CFT crystal field theory. So that is uh, this orbital here, the EG anti-bonding orbital. All right, that is the bonding orbital diagram. That's only in the MO diagram. Showed it to you. Um, e sigma, we're going to say, is going to vary depending upon the extent of sigma bonding. It's always going to be positive. So if you have a lot of overlap, if you have the angle, this is where the angular overlap comes in, if you have the angle such that you have a lot of overlap, that's going to be strong overlap. So E sigma is going to be relatively high. If you have the angle off so that you can't have a lot of overlap, E sigma is going to be relatively low. Okay. And so that's what this is saying here. High overlap there. Look, you got right straight on uh, interaction. Here, yeah, you're doing some interaction with the donut there, dz squared, but it's not going to be so great. And here, you're in this conical node of dz squared, and so no overlap. So that defines E sigma. E pi is, well, it's a pi bonding. So it it's, has to do with two lobes interacting. Remember, that's the definition of what a pi bond is. And E pi is going to be greater than zero for a donor ligand and less than zero for an acceptor ligand. Why is that? That has to do with all of our discussion about the MO diagram and MOs going up or down depending upon your uh, pi accepting or pi donor ligand. So refer back to what I said earlier in this video and in the previous video if you're confused about that. So uh, yeah, this gets kind of interesting because now we can have plus or minuses for the donor and acceptor ligands and sort of in one framework, we can quantify the, the pi uh, uh, bonding by a ligand in transition metal complexes. The magnitude of E pi, whether or not it's negative or positive, that magnitude, the absolute value of it, is always going to be less than E sigma for a given ligand. Why? Pi bonds are always weaker than sigma bonds. All right. So what we end up getting is this table. And this table basically does a bunch of calculus. Okay? It's a result of a bunch of calculus from looking at the degree of overlap of different geometric positions, OK, and the different, the five different d orbitals. So for example, uh, ligand position one, this is in an octahedral sort of environment. So this is like a, what probably we'd call an axial ligand. If you look at the dz squared orbital, you have a value of one there for sigma interaction. What does that mean? That means you have as much overlap as possible. You have like a pure sigma bond. Why do you have that? That's this, this picture, direct overlap, okay? But now, Look, if you look at the d x squared minus y squared with position one, zero, because an x squared minus y squared is in, is a cloverleaf, d x squared minus y squared is a cloverleaf in the x squared, in the xy plane. And you're talking about a ligand in the, on the z axis. You can't have any overlap there. So if you can't have any overlap, you, can, you can't make a sigma bond, okay? If you try to make a bond, it has to be some sort of different type of bond with multiple uh, ligand, uh, multiple lobes overlapping. And that's no longer a sigma bond. So under the sigma quadrant here, we put zero. And, and then, then you have other cases where it's sort of like you can have some overlap. So let's say here, dz squared, sigma overlap, one quarter. Why is that? 
Well, here's position two. This is position two. Okay. Uh, a dz squared can have some overlap. This turns out to be a quarter, the calculus tells us, by doing the overlap. Okay. It's basically an integral of the, the two orbitals. What's that going to be? That's going to look like something like this, right? Where you're off axis and the donut is interacting. Okay. Not super strong electron density there, but some correct symmetry to do it. So we say a quarter. Okay. Well, that's what the math comes up. And then there's all these other cases. And so you can go through these and sort of rationalize these and you can build many different geometries. Okay, tetrahedral framework here, bent framework. You can also combine these to make trigonal bipyramidal. And now you can see how you can do a lot of predicting for a lot of different coordination geometries. We're gonna be able to figure out by molecular orbital theory, a theory rooted at its core in quantum mechanics, we'll be able to figure out you know, which structures are more stable. And this will be, you know, the ultimate structural prediction and also a lot of other parameters about the molecule and chemical properties we can predict from this as well. And so we're gonna learn how to do that in the future videos.